This seems to be back where we started. Cyrus stands next to me, still and somber. I look at him, confused. For someone who just solved a problem, he seems genuinely, quietly distraught. Is something the matter? Quite frankly, yes. We're missing something key here. Hold on. He begins to consult his ICD. Apparently searching through the codex from what his eye movements suggests. Uh, from what his eye movements suggests. What exactly could be the problem? As far as I know, we'll still need to have someone mediate the situation between Gabriel and Brighton. And potentially that between Brighton and Fedria, but the threat of nuclear destruction should be out of the way for now. I open my own codex, scanning through the history of this world and such. The minutes pass by slowly, and neither of us speak. Finally, after going through many entries, I look away from my wrist. I couldn't find anything that seemed out of the ordinary. That can't be right. Sir? Completely ignoring me, his head swishes to the left, and he stares at the wall of televisions intently. I follow, perplexed. And we'll call it off for the... Oh, this is from the television. And we'll call it off for the moment. It seems as though President Barnaby still wants the world to be aware that his threats... That his threat was very real. Therefore, he has announced that within 20 minutes, Brighton will be demonstrating the, two, the true power of their bomb, setting it off in the Northern Sea. This will be the first large-scale test of the device, as Brighton was earlier unwilling due to heavy scrutiny while under Gabrian surveillance. Our sciences, our sciences correspondent, Samuel Yuri, will explain the concept behind this weapon, dubbed the Fusion Bomb. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Cyrus biting his teeth together. In the back of my mind, something tells me to be very worried right now. What are they worried about? This seems to be going how they thought it would, right? They're going to shoot it into the ocean. No one will be harmed by it. Thanks, Scott. Now, if you viewers will care to listen, I'll tell you all that is known on the theory. Now, some of you may know about the science beyond our nuclear power plants. The same theory employed in these fusion reactors is employed in the bomb developed by Brighton scientists. Similar to how stars are born, the bomb generates its, its destructive power through the fusion of atomic nuclei, creating atoms of an even larger mass. Firstly, at the center of the device, the bomb initializes by the extreme compression of a small space filled with gases and fuel. The ludicrously high temperature and pressure resulting then starts a powerful proton-proton chain reaction. This chain reaction is strong enough to fuse the atoms within, beginning the primary process for which this weapon gained its name, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion releases an immense amount of energy. Destructive power thousands of magnitudes greater than conventional weapons. In fact, with enough reactant, the energy released could actually start off a genuine star. Of course, scientists theorize that there isn't enough fuel on the entire planet to accomplish such a feat. But I'm blathering. I doubt you viewers even know what I'm talking about. We'll start by discussing atoms. Oh, what? What's bothering Cyrus? What? Seems fine. Wait, that doesn't sound like the bomb I read about? Sir, that doesn't really sound like the bomb I read about. Wait, it doesn't? That's different? I... Wait, didn't it say, keep in mind the difference between fusion and fission? I... Hold on. I can actually go back. I, ne I need to know this. Hold on. Nuclear fusion releases an immense amount of energy. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's fusion. Nuclear fusion. Let's check the codex. Hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa. There's actually a new one here. True fusion. No, wait, wait. How's that different? Concerns fusion weapons, which are initiated by fission. Wait, what's different? Let's, hold on. Let's read. Whoa, holy shit. That's long. Damn. <laughs> um... Note, this entry concerns man-made fusion with traits similar to star creation. For fusion initiated by fission, see the entry on nuclear fusion. 
True fusion is a term used mainly by earthen to describe manufactured nuclear fusion. Most systems are incapable of this process, and instead refer to fusion sparked by fission as nuclear fusion. Oh, okay, so I guess it's not... Not the same. What I read about before is not the same as this. This entry instead refers to the genuine, pure process of beginning sustainable nuclear fusion. As it is a term of our own creation, do not expect to hear it in any systems. Occasionally, a system will make the distinction between the two, but it is not to be counted on. Always investigate if, if you believe there may be confusion between terms. True fusion can be used to create stars, and is therefore incredibly dangerous, and significantly more likely to appear in a scientifically advanced society. The energy required to accomplish it is often unattainable, and the power generated is immense to the point where setting it off, let alone controlling it, is practically impossible. True fusion involves the fusing of light elements together to form, to create heavier elements. The process of forcing this reaction varies, but most often it mimics star birth, with the nuclei being massively compressed and heated, until a self-sustaining fusion begins. Usually this is accomplished via an artificial gravity well, this is exceptionally dangerous and even capable of nullifying an entire system. In fact, true fusion bombs have been developed by spacefaring societies as a means of quickly killing a planet's population. These are rare occurrences, however, as most spacefaring societies tend to be peaceful, at least to their own kind. On the other hand, in desperate and highly advanced societies, it is often proposed as means to replace primary stars, the star at the center of their solar system, like our sun, before they begin dying out. This incredibly complicated process involves having a method to transport a new fuel to the star, obliterating the old star, removing the heavier elements from the old star's remains, combining the new and old left over from the star's death fuel, starting fusion and accelerating star birth and aging to create a new star as quickly as possible. The, no the number of ways this process could go awry is staggering. In such an event, it would be preferable to simply move the system's population into another solar system and or area. Considering the chaotic and destructive nature of true fusion, extreme caution must be used in any situation where its usage is suggested. Okay, so apparently by them messing with true fusion, they might explode everything. That's bad. That's really bad. Damn it, I should have guessed. This world is a bloody outlier in every other regard. Is this the pure fusion bomb Cyrus had mentioned? Creating a star sounds very risky. Cyrus does not seem to like the possibility. But there's no way they used enough reactant, right? The person on screen said there's no possibility of such a thing. I open my mouth to confirm my suspicions with Cyrus. But just as I'm about to, I find that we're shifting. And we're back to the president. We were moved to the president's office in an instant before I'm even aware of why. I quickly realized that we came here to stop Barnaby, and both of us immediately start looking around the room in desperation, but find the president gone. Fuck. S stay here. I'm going to look for someone. Uh, sir, wait. He rushes out of the room, leaving me here alone to worry. I look at the window, now intensely frightened. Getting the normally cool Cyrus into such a heat could only mean that something absolutely irrevocable is about to happen. Also, I'd like to point out that there's yet more slender men and slender women. Seriously, cr faceless people. Whether it's supposed to be just a character like the barman or an actual painting. Just having them faceless is creepy as shit. Just pointing that out. Faceless people are creepy. There's a reason the slender man, the slender man doesn't have a face. Cause it's creepy. And this is creepy. Like, wooden doll blob people. Like, ugh. In the first place, should we even have to worry? Worry? Surely their theories will hold up. Surely that is the case, right? I stand alone for several minutes, glancing fervently at my watch and growing more and more agitated as time crawls by. Cyrus returns after 15 minutes. There isn't anyone here. Just a damned receptionist who won't say anything. Support. Listen to me. The situation is nearly out of control. Do you have anything? He walks away from me and into a corner. 
Again, I look through my codex, hoping. Hoping there's something that I missed earlier. Hoping they didn't use enough reactant. Hoping that I have nothing to worry about. In a few minutes, the horizon is aglow. Oh, shit. It, it must have gone off. I stare into the brilliant hue, pleading to anyone that it will end with only light. But with every passing second, it grows brighter. The glass sweats, and the room grows warmer. I stand still before the spectacle, thinking that maybe it isn't over yet. Maybe everything worked out. Cyrus is still somewhere in the room and yelling, though, so I think I must face the simple fact. I wanted nobody to die, and now maybe everyone will. Is it my fault? What did I even think to suggest anything? But, but if I hadn't stopped Cyrus, then this would have happened anyway, right? It's not my fault, then. I was just trying to save everyone. I just wanted to make a difference. It's not my fault at all. Ugh. Cyrus has dived onto me from his corner, blocking the window's light from my view. Is this it? Keep your head down. He covers my head and body with his arms and torso. We need to... A whooping, deeply bass sound resonates from outdoors. The window has shattered. Her... Sir? He slides off of me and collapses, clutching his arm. Sir... I gasp at the sight of where he is gripping. Glass has stabbed through his coat, and blood leaks out from his sleeve. Also along his back, there are shards, and his face is contorted viciously. On my knees, I begin reaching out to him, but quickly pull back. It would only make things worse to touch him. I look out of the window that is no longer there. It... It is not a beauty I care to know. No. Somewhere far away, I hear Cyrus yelling. We just felt the wave. That's what. It's becoming self-sustaining. It's beyond the point of no return. The reaction won't stop until the whole atmosphere is gone. This world is dead, understand? It's over. I failed. Now get us out of here. Cyrus. Hurry, damn it. I can't believe this. We failed. The light becomes overbearing, blistering, and before it can consume us, we're back. High radiation levels detected. Please remain calm and wait for emergency medical personnel to assist you. It, it even irradiated me, although I escaped. Where's my mentor? The words come out on their own, and are spoken in earnest. I frantically look about the room till I find he is right behind me, crumpled in a pile and breathing heavily. I'm here, Winter. Are we going to die? You won't. What? Are you going to die? I don't think so. What happened, sir? The words roll up my throat as a stone, and I choke as they part from my lips. I have no idea why I even bother asking. Is it really all gone? The world was killed. Brighton had never tested their bomb, and it seems... They overcompensated. A reaction that strong will use almost any of the lighter elements as fuel. So the atmosphere was consumed. It burned away in an instant, leaving the people to die. The next and last thing he says is spoken while looking up at me, with bitterness and guilt in his eyes. I'm sorry. The pain and ache in his voice strikes through me and my heart thumps. I can't help but cry. I knew exactly what happened. I saw what happened. I... I know what happened. To call this realization devastating would not be an appropriately poignant... Poignant... I, sorry, I forgot how to pronounce that word. Poignant? But whatever. Description. My heart feels as though it's bleeding, broken, and damned. I don't even know exactly what I'm crying over now. Just... Comprehending this is difficult. It's difficult. 
It's hard. Crying harder, my molars scraping together, I grind the lower of my palms into my eyes, trying to hold the flow back. I feel gross all over. I'm sweating cold water and feeling like mud. My stomach turns and my emotions rise even harder. But we... Didn't we... Something wheels into the room, but I can't see it. I can only hear it. Taking my hands from my eyes, I see people in hazard suits walking towards us, with a trolley in company. One comes near to me, and again, my words spill out. We're sick, right? We're irradiated and sick? You are, and you'll have to lie on the ground to get better, okay? The other people in the room crowd over Cyrus, who decidedly deserves the extra attention. Will we be alright, then? Yes, it'll be alright. You'll be alright. Just lie down. What about my mentor? We'll be taking him to another room to look after his deeper wounds. Now come on, you need to lie down. I do so, but fairly reluctantly. I feel like I'm going to throw up, and I've heard that throwing up while lying down can drown you. I don't tell her that though, because I don't want to know what it mean if it means uh, I don't want to know if it means it's worse if I feel like throwing up. I want to think that I will be okay, even in this nausea. I just want to be okay. The paramedic lifts my arm and inserts an IV into the back of my hand. I flinch at the small pain, feeling more sensitive than usual. There, there. It should be perfectly fine from here. We're administering a drug that will clear away all the radiation inside of you. It'll heal you rather quickly. We'll even stop the later effects from coming on. You'll still feel the early symptoms eventually, though. And you aren't going to like it. It's going to hurt, and it's going to feel disgusting. What are the early symptoms, exactly? Well, you'll feel weak, you'll feel dizzy, and you'll have a headache and fever. The worst of it, though, would probably be the puking and diarrhea. What? No. I'm sorry. There really isn't anything we can do about it. She places her gloved hand on my forehead, wiping away my sweat and hair. If you want to, we can put you to sleep and wait until the symptoms go away. I shake my head slowly. I don't want to sleep. I'll probably have nightmares or something. Which was this? Your second shadowing? Everything went so wrong so quickly, and I didn't even know anything from the start. Blaming yourself, are you? I... Suggested it. <laughs> I start crying, crying again, raging sadness, hatred at myself, and why? Because I don't take anything properly seriously. I was playing a game of words, I'm such, such an idiot. I, I told... I told him to... I told him to launch it. Why? Shh. Let's stop talking about it, alright? I killed them. I saw it. It's like it's burned in me. Come on. You need to settle down. I shut up. I want to shut up. Talking puts vomit on my tongue anyway. Can I stay here for a while? Can you speak to me a little? Sure. You'll have to be here for a while anyway. I'll tell you about where I'm from, okay? So, she does so, telling me about the northwestern country where she grew up. The vast fields and sinking meadows, the sheep and dancing breeze. Being from the Centerlands, I don't know the rolling verdant hills and grazing animals she speaks of. I know only lawns and trees, streets with people riding by, distant mountains, corner stores, small buildings, and sidewalks with many faces, all a touch languishing. I mostly know my room, though, dark and quiet and calming, familiar and safe. I'm really back, aren't I? Cyrus and I lived. I stopped thinking and let her speak softly, brushing me lightly and calming me down. Feeling any better? Emotionally, at least? She smiles. Seeing this, clear, uh, seeing this clearly without her suit on is nice. 
I feel like the most disgusting thing. But yes, emotionally, I'm much more alright. Thank you. Don't mention it. Do you want to get up now, or do you want to keep hearing, uh, hearing me run my mouth? I like your voice. Thank you. I'll get up. I want to throw up now. At this, she jumps a little and rises, helping me up quickly but carefully. I waver, and would be most completely unsteady if not for her hand. Alright, alright, alright. Do you need to throw up now, or can you hold it at all? I've been holding it for 30 minutes. She sighs in a manner of defeat. You should have said so. I can hold it a little longer. I can make it to my room. Are you sure? Yes. No, but I really want to go to my room. It isn't like my room back home, but it at least feels like a proper place to rest. Okay then, we'll hurry on. Before we exit the terminal, I look back at the bloody stains, which indicate where Cyrus once lied. How long has it been since he was taken away? Is he doing well? I hope that he is. My roommate is at her desk when we arrive. Reading, it seems. Hey, Waverly. Oh, Winter, you're back. She starts to look up. How'd your thing go? At the sight of me, she flinches and looks disbelieving. Oh, c I... what? I, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I have no idea what that word even is or how it's pronounced. Cacole? What? <clears throat> anyway, moving on. She immediately covers her mouth upon noticing that I'm being carried by an adult. I mean... She stares at me for an incredibly long second before turning to the paramedic and gently placing her book down. Her mouth slowly hangs open, as if to try to speak, but it seems she's unsuccessful. Do you want me to help you to the bathroom? Sure, yeah, sure. My caretaker says nothing more and simply aids me farther on. As we pass by my roommate, she jumps to attention, starting up from her seat. I, is she all right? What happened to her? Radiation poisoning. Waverly shrinks back down into the chair. Don't worry, she's not irradiated anymore. The lady opens the bathroom door and sets me on the tiles before the toilet seat. Leaning against the doorframe, she looks back out at Waverly. She's got the sickness, though. Yes, yes I do. Flipping the lid up, I immediately vomit into the toilet. It's almost like it's for emphasis. What happened? It's... it'd probably be better for her to tell you. Anyway, you must be her roommate. Waverly says nothing, but I imagine she's nodding her answer, for the paramedic continues. Good. I need you to keep her from eating tonight. Wouldn't be any good for her in this state. I throw up again with impeccable timing. A disgusting, thick and saccharine spit fills up my mouth, and when I try to swallow it, I feel like barfing. Parting my lips to gasp, it just kind of drips out, slimy. It's probably making me feel sicker than anything else. She'll be in there for a while, vomiting and things worse. Just keep an eye on her. Make sure she's alright. Uh, um, alright. Anything else? If she's feeling real bad, I want you to call us down, uh, down at the ward with your whole emergency line. You know where it is, right? Yeah. Alright, and one more thing. You've got to get her a good breakfast tomorrow and make sure that she drinks plenty of liquids. After tonight, she'll definitely be dehydrated and more than a little starved. I want you to make certain she remedies that no matter what. Understand? Okay, I will. I feel the paramedic's gaze on me again. It makes me aware that my stomach's churning, churning off noises. I hurl again. You're positive you don't want anything? Y yes. 
Okay. I'm sure you've guessed already, but your debriefing has been pushed back until tomorrow afternoon, in consideration of your state. I'll be leaving you in your roommate's care, now. I need to make sure your mentor's procedure's gone well, or, or is going. I hear Waverly gasp lightly at the second sentence. Can you tell him that I'm sorry, too? Sure. And hey. Wiping my mouth with the back of my hand, I look back at the paramedic from over my shoulder. Feel better, okay? I mean, even more better. I don't want this getting to you. You should visit one of the counselors once you're able to. Don't keep it all inside. I lock eye with, eyes with her for a time, but eventually turn back to the rancid fumes of my puke. I'll try. I can feel her smiling. Good. Hopefully I won't be seeing you, girl. I hear her footsteps as she turns to leave. Take good care with her, okay? Uh, of course. The door opens, and in another second, closes. I kneel in front of the toilet and retch a bit, wondering whether or not I'll be vomiting again. If this damned saliva will have anything to do with it, it'll make certain that I do. So gross. In nearly a minute, the sound of soft movements closes in on me from behind. Do you want me to rub your back at all? Actually, yes. I think that would help. Waverly doesn't hesitate to tiptoe to my side and bend down. She starts massaging me with one hand up and down between my shoulder blades. The feeling is great. Much appreciated. I feel a little more like throwing up now, which, come to think of it, ironically enough, is all I really want. Retching is seriously so much worse than just letting it out. Thank you. Nah, it's, it's nothing. Can you talk at all? Something comes up, but doesn't come to pass. Again. I heave a few times before answering her. I... I don't think I can hold much of a conversation. Try nodding, then. I'll just ask you yes or no questions. Ugh. How'd your mediation go? You do it? I begin the movement to shake my head, but stop. Because I sort of did do it. Cyrus and I really did remedy the situation. Leaning my neck right, I kind of shrug. After all, even if we managed to succeed, it led to such an awful failure that, well, does it really matter? I have no idea what that is. Like, you don't know? How don't you... Did you get knocked out? I shake my head. Then it's like, complicated? I nod. We managed to resolve a conflict. Not the actual conflict, but an urgent one. Oh crap. I hurl again, nearly pushing my head past the lid. When it's over, I rest my arms on the seat, and my head in my hands. Waverly, frowning, continues to rub my back nicely. Ugh. You alright? I can't really answer past barely nodding my head. Then I guess something bad happened after that? I repeat the same head movement. Waverly pauses, clearly not sure whether or not to say what she wants to say next. She eventually, she eventually chooses yes. How bad? I look at her. Somehow, my silence and my gaze convey the message. For a moment, she stops massaging me and just looks in my eyes with a nearly empty expression, one of repressed sadness and of worry. Continuing her massage, she goes direct. What happened? The world ended. Still rubbing me, her expression goes indecipherable. If I had to take a guess, the closest thing I'd call it is scared. For several minutes, she stays with me and keeps me relaxed, until I'm finally done with vomiting and ready to do something else. Waverly leaves the bathroom and allows me to sit on the toilet rather than in front of it, closing the door. I don't know how long it's been, but it finally seems to be over. After a brush of the teeth and a scrub of the skin, I feel as though I'm actually done. Not better, though. Not by any means. 
In fact, when I open the door, I nearly collapse. Surprisingly, Waverly is there to readily catch me. All done? I nod. Want to go to bed now? Yeah. Then get walking. Dragging you across the room doesn't make me feel right. I can't really walk. Waverly frowns at my lack of answer and soon pulls me to my bedside. She then hoists me up and drops me on the mattress. You brought that on yourself. She looks at me sternly for a second before snickering. <laughs> You're a wicked person. I can't believe this abuse. I run a strict ship. I'm like a fairy tale orphaner, the evil one that everyone hates. I really, really have no idea what you're talking about. I was actually reading some of our foreign libraries, and there's a lot of stories about orphan abuse. Why would you hate orphans? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's why they're evil. She smiles. Want to sleep now? Yeah, well, no, but I think I should. I feel like a pile of dirt. All right, I'll turn off the light. I nod a thanks and look up at the ceiling as the room falls to darkness. I hear Waverly, Waverly enter her bed with a squeak. Hey. Yeah? What happened to Cyrus? Wasn't he your mentor today? He saved me from an explosion of glass. The last time I saw him, he was irradiated and bleeding. Waverly lets off a breathy whistle. Man, how did all that even happen? I wish it was a long story, but it's not. It was very quick, actually. It happened all fast. It's just that there were a lot of things to it. It got really hard. It turned into a thing it wasn't supposed to be. I could have left, but I didn't. I wanted to do something, myself. I sigh. I'll tell you more tomorrow morning at breakfast. How is your shadowing? Compared to yours, it already sounds boring. I think all of ours were supposed to be boring. I went to a city and looked for a group of people who allegedly didn't exist. They did, and we found them hiding in shadows. You went to a place with... Uh, Malleable physics? Uh, no. It was rigid. It was some kind of science or something. And man, don't ask me how, because I've got no idea. None. Huh. We both fall silent again, but end up chatting again in a minute. I ask her about our classmates and whether or not they're... Uh, whether or not they have any interesting stories from today. It's mostly dull, though, and I find that amusing. For everyone else, this run of shadowing was as dull as the last. In fact, the most, the most interesting story came from one of our year's promising students who didn't even have a shadow this week. He's part of the group that does it while we're on break. It really is just funny. It's funny because it's kind of all just unpredictable. For some reason, unpredictability is such a silly thing to me. There's so much irony in that, considering today. Gracious, I must be totally losing it. That totally must be the case. The longer that I stay here, the stranger I'll become. <laughs> oh well. Oh, is that the... Oh, it's the end! It is the end! Okay, I thought it might be. Wow. Oh, I think this is, um... Yeah, I think this is the trailer for the game that's playing, which looks extremely good. I, I just can't believe how polished this game is, how good it is in so many ways. In every way. I mean, look at, look at that! It's amazing looking! 
it's really amazing what they managed to do. It's just freaking beautiful. All right, so the biggest thought on my mind is, could I have changed the outcome at all? What if I went along with his plan, with Cyrus's plan from the beginning, to kill the president? Would that have changed anything? I, I have no idea. Yep, that was episode one, learning to manage chaos. Let's see if there's any extras in the menu, actually. Wait a minute, what is this? I need to do something. Right. I should do something. Wait, is this not the end? Whoa. The doctor. Nurse, the whatever she was yesterday, told me to make sure that Winter ate breakfast and drank liquids. I'm not living up to that responsibility. Okay, so now I'm taking on Waverly's perspective. Is this like a teaser for next episode, or what? It's already past 12, and she's still sleeping. Then I should wake her up, right? Ugh, I don't know. First off, that's really weird. I hardly know her. Secondly, just watching her in bed feels... sketchy. She's curled up in there, looking comfortable. I just can't. Frankly, it's cute. Frankly, just having that opinion makes me feel scummy. Ugh, whatever. It's probably best if she wakes on her own. Then again, she's been shivering. She could have a fever. I glance over at her from my desk. Man, I have to check. What is this, 14 hours rest? I set my book face down with care and rise, tiptoeing over to her bedside. She's so small and... and pathetic, really. She reminds me of this one kid we had back home. A runt. It feel... It feels like anything that happens to her is too much. She shivers again, and I have some ideas to warm her up. That would most likely make our relationship even more awkward. <laughs> well, I need to at least touch her forehead to make sure she's alright. Or is not, I guess. It's actually a bit cool. She sweats out a lot during the night, looks like. So I imagine any fever she's had is gone now. I pull back my hand. While she's readjusting, I retreat to my desk and pretend to be reading. K mm. I hear her sit up, and I flinch a, a bit in spite of myself. M morning. Is it really? I look over my shoulder to find her rubbing her face and turning to the window. She grumbles and puts a palm over one of her eyes. How are you feeling? Not much. Uh, I mean that I don't feel like much of anything. Could be because of... And the medicine. She nods just a little. You seem better. I guess. She abruptly flops down onto her mattress after a small silence. I turn back to face my book. It's actually past noon, by the way. I figured. You'll have to settle for lunch instead of breakfast. I consider apologizing, but restrain myself. I wonder if she even wants to eat. I'm guessing no if that doctor was so insistent that she does so. Are you going back to sleep? I look over my shoulder again. Winter? Out like a light. Great. I'll have to steal myself later and just shake her awake, I guess. I get back to the novel in my hand. Oh, this is getting intense. I got this book from the world's library. It's called a crime of romance novel or whatever. It's uh, not strange to be interested in weird literature, is it? I don't think so. At least, I mean, come on. It's perfectly normal to be interested in unusual things. You just can't read the sort of thing from any earthen source. Nothing this terrible exists. 
Great. Just now, I was starting to enjoy this. I close the book and put it down. Though I don't get up to answer the door. If it's someone important, like the doctor, then she'll say something. Anyone else would either tarry for only a bit or keep knocking till they're answered. Oh man, what is this? I've got a feeling. I sigh. I stand from my chair and I stretch a bit. Only then do I step over and open the door. From Irie, whoever that is. V, you've got your nose in some body works. Works again? Reading some pornography again? Answer the door quick. This is the worst possible visitor. It's like the brightest star has descended right here in the hallway. She's all smiles. I don't need this right now. I don't read pornography, Irie. There's that word again. C Cole? I don't know what the hell that is. I really don't want to hear your vile accent right now. She puts on a pretend expression of hurt. You'll insult me at the door. Won't even bloody well invite me in. That's the kind of behavior befitting lesser people, V. Not you. I stare at her. And V? You've got to be honest. I know you delay in entertaining guests. Oh, shit. Whoops. I know you delay in entertaining guests for thine own fancy, but you've got to admit to it one day. Also, out of character, I'd like to uh, just comment that the music is once again good, but ridiculously inappropriate. This is like, what, house dance music or something? What the hell? Um, it doesn't quite fit the mood. And by doesn't quite, I mean not at all. Anyway, back to it. Huh? Admit to it? To what? V, listen. She grabs my shoulders and looks me in the eyes through her ridiculous transparent colored shades. Listen to me. If you're not honest, you'll rot. Rot? Yeah, rot. Hard T. Say... Uh, say is Winian? Wait, wait. How, how are you supposed to say that? Say is... You're supposed to say it without the I? Just the S? Say is Winian? Like, what? Say is Winian? That's what I'm gonna go with. She could at least remove her hands from my person before she asks for another. You come to see Winter? Her grin returns in its full obnoxious glory. <laughs> yeah, I heard she fucked up massively. I wish I'd been there to see it. Her face flushed with tears. The fuck? Jesus, Irie is a terrible person. You want to make fun of her? She laughs again, shaking me a bit. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me here, V. V, sweet V. Chaos hath made its fun of her already. What more could I do? She nuked an entire system, man. How do you even do that? Ugh. Can't you even for a second attempt to resemble a decent human being? V. I just said I'm not here to make fun. I just want to see her. Mayhaps give her uh, gaunt little cheeks a poke or two. She's not gaunt. Her smile vanishes. Yeah, you're right, V. Her thighs... Her smile returns. What does she do to fill those thighs, V? Hath she let you give them a squeeze yet? N yet? She's a mess of a girl. Har well, this is really hard to read. Har Har what the... What, what is that? Even? Hardly even... Yeah, okay. Even. Hardly even looks like a girl, but those legs... Who gave her the idea to wear those stockings of hers? Goodness. You sound like a lesbian. V, I'm just admiring another beautiful woman. As a beautiful woman myself, nothing lesy about that. <laughs> this is such a bizarre conversation. And I'm just imagining it read in whatever accent this is supposed to be, if you actually said it with all the weird accent... accental things you see here. That myself. Her lips twist a little and she looks right into my eyes. Tell me, who here would think of another girl with lustful eyes? Who's the man, Waverly? Ah, but I digress. Winnie could stand to be much more beautiful, right? Get your bloody hands off me already. 
She does so. So, can I come in now? No. Why on earth not? You're a bastard, Irie. Oi. She points at me. Let's be a bit more subtle here, right? Let's keep it fun. Fun, she says. And hey, I should be allowed in. Winnie is my best friend. She is not. By what authority does Tathau make such bold claims? By common sense, you clod. She giggles. Ye? Ye? I, I don't even know. Girl... <laughs> this is... What the fuck is going on? Girl did not even begin to talk mess about my Northwesterner's voice. It's like listening to a breeze. And you're like listening to a cat being drawn and quartered. Oh? Shit. Why'd I mention that? I reflexively cover my mouth, as if I can grab what I've just said before it can... Uh, wait. As if I can grab what I've just said before it can reach her ears and swallow it back. Her ears perk up. She blinks. Drawn and quartered? What's that? I refuse to answer. Is that... Is it a kind of torture? I watch in repulsion, repulsion as she quietly lifts her thumb to her mouth and gently bites the nail. Nibbling, she sways the rest of her hand in a slow motion. She gives me the slightest smile. Been reading some interesting stuff from the libraries, huh? Old Waves. What's the book? Forget it. Tease. I'll find it. I... I, I have faith? I've... I've faith? What? I... I don't know. I give up trying to understand what she's saying. She leans into the door, smirking. She crosses her arms and visibly relaxes. Okay, love. I want you to know that I'm loving this. And I love it dearly... That again. But I do want to see Winnie. Mercy, this girl is persistent. Didn't I say no? Then can you tell her that I feel bad for her? Do I look like the type to spread lies? Tell her I want to see her. What for? Because I told you to. No, I mean, why do you want to see her? She shrugs. Because it spills like that what build character V, and I'm a scholar for character study. Grinning again, she adds. Though I admit, I was interested in her before, because she's like a little animal. And don't you want to grab such things up and just... eat them? You're coming on too strong. It's suffocating. Me? Me. She stares at me, her hands over her chest in mock disbelief. Eventually, she starts to smile. Again, I have no idea what that word is. I wish she would just go away. She drops her hands. Huh. It's too bad for me. You're such a powerful gatekeeper. I can't even catch a glimpse of the gray little one from here. I guess I'll be seeing you then, V. Let's hope not. I think a teacher was going to come around to this room a little bit later. Which? I would tell you if I knew. If I knew it, lovely. Good luck and peace. Oh dear god, I'm so glad she's gone. Ah, she finally departs. Right. I return to my desk in a foul mood. I don't even want to pick this book back up. Waverly. Who was that just now? I put my arms up on my desk and slouch, resting my cheek in my hand. Irie. Irie? Yeah. She wanted to talk to me? Well, no, probably not. I... She did want to see you, though. She wanted to... I pause. Well, we all know Irie by now, don't we? I hear some kind of ragged, pulsing breath, which I take for Winter's laugh. We do. She's a character. I flip my book back open and begin once more from where I left off. I don't want to bother having her around. I don't want to bother hearing her around. The noise from before repeats with something of a greater intensity, leading to coughing. I sigh. 
I'm sorry, Winter. I'm too amusing for sick people, I guess. You're ridiculous. I'm too... Wonderful. Amazing. Astounding. Stop that. I should have chosen to go to a comedy school. You'd get, you get laughed off the stage in a bad way. You laugh at my jokes and go on to say that? I shouldn't... I shouldn't bother helping you out anymore. More ridiculousness. No. I command you. Command me? I command you to open the windows. It's hot. Winter. It's the middle of winter. <sighs> I do suppose the thermostat's rather high. I start getting up. And there is my smolder smoldering attractiveness to consider. So stifling. <laughs> Winter hacks slash laughs again as I go to complete her task. There's something special to be said about people who cause laughter with intent to breed suffering. <laughs> oh, what's that? I open the first window. Wait. Let me try to be clever. Opening the second, I begin to return to my seat. It's better to be clever when you're quick on the take, Winter. Oh yes, I was certain I had something there. You've ever gotten the feeling that there's something smart to be said if only you could figure out what it was? That's what happened. I sit down, looking over at her. How slow are you? I feel like chilled molasses, except warm. Very slow. By the way, a teacher should be coming around. Which? If I knew that, I'd tell you, lovely. <laughs> I should stop that. I already regret saying it once. I can hardly believe she comes from the same continent as I do. The Centerlands are huge. You'd best believe it. Plus, I'm pretty sure she's somewhat southwestern with a name like that. Do you all sound the same in the Northwest? Yes, Winter, all 70 million of us talk exactly like me. Sorry, it's just a lot smaller. I smile. Well, honestly, the regional differences are nothing compared to the differences between the Westerns here and you middle folk. At least our worst dialect is still understandable. Understandable? I can understand Iri just fine, actually. I let out an exaggerated groan. <clears throat> Please, I don't need any more talk like that in my life. I I just can understand it, that's all. I didn't say that I'd reproduce it. I laugh a bit. She seems to have gotten more energetic. Even if she is, even if she is still lying in bed. It's good we're friendly, even if I do hesitate to take care of her. Having a poor roommate sounds like the worst. Winter Harrison's place? Coming. As I get up, I smile at Winter. Bet on who it is? I don't know all their voices yet. Think it's our combat instructor? Souther is an ancient Winter. It sounds more like Henry. She pulls the covers up over her face a bit, in a small show of embarrassment. Adorable, but enough dallying. Hello, Mr. Penn. I was right. Good day, Waverly. How are you? Fine, sir. Oh, Waverly's here. <laughs> Isn't that... Waverly. It's been weeks since I last saw you. A bitter few weeks. So you've been fine, huh? Uh, yes, sir. My first mentor. What's he doing here with Henry? You know, seeing them side by side, they really dress alike. Very stylish. And very sharp. You mentored this child? Can you believe it? They gave me the simplest jobs only because I'm so young. There are plenty of reasons for it, Walter. Plenty of bullshit. I've done measures better than... Uh, what was it we... What is it we did, Waverly? Uh, I totally forgot. It was so boring. Our first mediations are apparently always supposed to be really easy, and unfortunately, very tame. Long-term, low danger. 
I think it had something to do with Earth, like moving dirt. It was incredibly stupid. I think it was construction issues. I stand corrected. There's nothing that can top that, Henry. Playing in the mud, right? That's totally the pinnacle. Don't be a smartass, Walter. Walter's one of the more bizarre things I've encountered since becoming a mediator, and he's from Earth. I can't actually peg him down at all. He's the only thing I clearly remember about my first mediation. I know, I know. Anyway, we didn't come here to pester my protege. Winter Harrison, right? That's right. Is she in, Waverly? Y yeah, but... Don't worry. You don't need to go get her. I just wanted you to relay something. Or, relay some things. Harrison. Harrison, was that Cyrus's girl? Yes, from the... From the dead world? You're here for the girl who went through that? Yes. Walter puts on a strange, somewhat negative expression and places a hand on his lips. Uh, on his hip. Pursing his lips, he looks at me. And then passed me into the room. I just kind of avoid his eyes. I don't know what Cyrus was doing. His report was nonsense. Walter. Nonsense, Henry. His explanation, what went down, it's horse shit. I don't want to hear it. How did he manage to fuck things up so massively? There were simple... There were simple... There were simple checks to go through. I know he's all about... Just getting it over with, but... There were children's mistakes, and he ruined a child for them. I'm going to need to talk with them later. Will you come? He doesn't listen to anything I say. If you don't persist with numbskulls, they never will. Even though he's a top-tier mediator, I don't think I've ever heard any other mediator, uh, mediators go long without talking mess about Cyrus. I'm a little pissed off with him, too. Not that I know entirely what went down. The death of an entire world. I wonder what they'll say about it when we next have class. I wonder how many other students know about it. There are so many worlds, though. So many planes. Maybe they won't bother. What's one more lost? I don't know what I'm thinking. While I'm musing over my cruelly dismissive thoughts, a white square of paper moves into my eyesight. Looking up, I see that it's a letter being held by Henry. Give this to Mistress Harrison, would you? I take it. On the front, it reads. For whenever it's too much to bear, read this. Henry Penn. Tell her to expect a meeting with me later, as well. I nod. Glancing, br uh, glancing briefly inside, Henry bends to my ear and speaks in a whisper. Presently, I won't offer my condolences or words for her, as it would be rude of me to assume her state. I'd prefer to talk to her directly, you see. He puts a hand on my shoulder. If this has affected you, as it very likely might have, you know where my office is. He straightens up and looks at his watch. I rotate my shoulder a little. It's Winter, right? I nod. Yes. Make sure Winter thinks about what happened, everything that happened. This isn't something to run away from. I nod, slowly. The same goes for you, Mistress... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Ire? I, whatever. <laughs> he pokes my nose at the dip, and I wiggle it in irritation. What is it with these men and touching? Walter smirks at me. Weirdo. Let's get going, Walter. All right. Henry nods with his departure. Walter smiles and waves. I close the door. I stretch out again and look at Penn's letter. Who was it? My first mentor and... I look over at her. And Henry. He wrote you a letter. I draw attention to said letter by raising it a bit and flapping it lightly. Your first mentor? Walter Liz Len... Something Western. Moving to her bedside, I hand her the letter. I don't think you should read it yet. Winter looks it over and gives it a light shake. 
She frowns. Me neither. I hesitantly, hesitantly allow myself a smile. That's good, right? As for when things become too much to bear. I wiggle my fingers with joking emphasis. Yeah. Resting the letter on her bed, she goes quiet. You need to eat, girl. She grimaces at me. Do I? Really? Yes. Now come on. I reach down and she grudgingly extends her arms, embracing me around the back of my neck. I pick her up in my arms. What is this? I don't want to walk. You need to walk. I only picked you up since you didn't put your feet to the floor when I moved in. I'm just really lethargic. I don't want to move around at all. And I have this wicked cough. You can stand, can't you? I'm not kidding. At least just at the door? That's... Embarrassing. It's totally embarrassing. I don't want to be seen like this. Please, Waverly? No, you've been lying in bed long enough. Down you go. I begin to lower her, and she moans in complaint. Man, this girl's too light. Fe feels like I'm barely holding anything. After whining a bit more, she relinquishes and carefully stands. I help her to the door, and pause to let her stretch her legs a little. Are you good? She's quivering and everything. I think I'm fine. Let's get going. Come on. I'll hold on to you at least. Thanks. I need that, I think. Oh, that's the end. Congratulations on completing the game. You may now save your profile. Saving profiles allows for future episodes of Dysfunctional Systems to remember your choices. All right, well, I better do that. Be sure to give your profiles descriptive names so you can recognize them later. Multiple pro profiles may share the same name. Okay, I'm going to name this uh, Winter... Uh, Winter... Fuck Cyrus... Did how you spell Cyrus? I think that's how you spelled his name. Fuck Cyrus Route. I... It doesn't fit the E. Whatever. Root. Yeah. Er, no. Uh, path. There we go. Fuck Cyrus Path. Okay, that was... Uh, that was a really bizarre ending. That was really, really bizarre ending. Like, I, I really like this game. But I just want to mention some things about it. Um, tonally, it's very strange, and the structure of the story is also very strange. So, basically, here's, here's the only thing that I find negative about the game, or the things that I find negative about the game. And here are the issues that I had with it. So, in the beginning... You're thrust into this confusing, not, again, not a world, because there's multiple planes of existence with many different worlds, but you're thrust into this confusing universe, or set of universes. And you have no idea who Winter is. You don't know where she came from, you don't know what life is back is like, uh, back where she came from. You, know, you, don't, you just don't know the context. You have no idea about the context of what's going on. So that was my first major issue with the game uh, to start off with, because it made it hard for me to get into the game. Because I didn't really know what was going on, and it, I found it hard to really get into the characters and care about them to begin with, because I didn't really know anything about where they came from or anything like that. You know, I didn't feel like I actually understood them. And although I did, obviously, of course, get into the characters a lot more, um, I, I still felt like I don't... I still feel like the character should have been just developed further before you were just tossed into the shit, you know? I mean, they just, like, toss you in the deep end as far as uh, what's going on in the story goes. And there's never really any time to learn about where they came from. And even by the end, even though I know a bit more about them, still, I barely know anything about Winter. 
barely anything at all. Barely anything about her world, barely anything about what she does, about why she's doing it, about... everything. So I still feel disconnected from that. I think that was a major negative that really stopped me from getting into the game as much as I would have otherwise. Uh, and the other... the only other negative thing... And I'm gonna get to the positives, because there are a lot of positives, but I want to end on the positives. So I'm gonna go through the other negative thing. And that's the, uh... The structure of the story is just kind of... Bizarre. Like... When it started playing that little... the video... Which I believe was the teaser trailer... Uh, for Dysfunctional Systems, it... I thought that was the end, right? I mean, it looked like the end. It felt like the end. But then the game continued for like, what, over a half hour after that? Like, what? I mean, I feel like the credits practically played for the game. Like, like imagine watching a movie, the credits go, and then there's like a half hour more to it. How bizarre would that be? And that's what I feel like just happened. So not only is it bizarre that it kept continuing, like, it kept continuing and it felt like they were going to really go into, um, her mental state in the aftermath of this. Like, they are going to really delve deep into it. So it felt like they were gearing up again, right? Like in this last section, they were really gearing up to explore that well. But then it just ends. So I thought it ended, and then it keeps going. So I think, okay, maybe it's a lot longer than I thought, and they're going to delve deep into her mental state. And then they don't. It just ends, abruptly. Like, what? And to make it even stranger... Th like, the music in that whole end section was totally bizarrely inappropriate. It was good. It was just inappropriate for the tone of what was happening, so I was super just weirded out. Like, I thought it ended, but then it didn't, and then there's weird music playing that doesn't fit. And one of the big characters in that last section, I already forgot her name, Irie or whatever, was like a weird comedy character that just felt totally inappropriate, given everything that had just happened. Like, I felt, I, I felt like I slipped into some bizarro dimension. So, in some ways, the game feels a little bit, just, weird in its overall structure. A little bit cobbled together, not quite cohesive, you know? I want to know more about... I felt like I should have gotten more of a chance to know the characters, especially Winter, before being thrown into the deep end. The music was inappropriate sometimes, the structure of the whole ending of the game was weird. Yeah, so those are the negatives, but the positives outweigh them by far. Like I said before, the game looked beautiful going in, and it is. It is so good looking. Great, great art. Great music. Again, sometimes the music was inappropriate to the tone of what was happening. But most of the time it was fine. And it was always good quality music. Very good. Um, yeah, the writing is very strong. Very strong writing. The only thing weak about the writing was, again, the, the lack of being able to get... Uh, be familiarized with the characters before being thrown into it. But other than that, the writing was excellent. So, yeah, this was one hell of a visual novel. And I'm still... I am blown away that games like this, games this good, are practically unknown. Like, how come I haven't heard of this? This game is great! This is... it's 2013. We have the internet. You know, it's not like we have to... You know, like, manually write a book and manually make every single individual copy by hand and send it off on a cart with a bunch of donkeys. We have the freaking internet. Like, how can there be such hidden gems? I'm so blown away. This is something I've experienced with a few recent games, being blown away by how there's these incredibly good, hidden gems. Like, full-on, professional-quality, amazing games that are just basically unknown and I've never heard about. How does that even happen? I'm so confused, but I'm also so glad that I found it. And, in fact, the only reason I found it... Um... The only reason I found it at all is because I played... Juniper's not. And the only reason I found Juniper's not is because of the viewer that suggested it to me. Uh, Spectre Von Baron, I believe the name was. 
So, thank you, Spectre Von Baron, for suggesting Junipers not to be. Because if I had not played that great game, I would have never played this great game. So yeah, I'm once again just blown away that games this good are just out there on the internet for people to play, and yet somehow they go largely unnoticed. Blown away. Let's see, what else is there to talk about? Okay, two more things to mention. Um, I don't think I mentioned before, but this game is on a Steam Greenlight. So, if you're interested in uh, bringing this game, well, to have greater attention, like I said, to, you know, get it uh, the recognition it definitely deserves, then definitely consider supporting it on Steam Greenlight. Alright, the last thing I want to talk about is the decisions I made in the game. Okay, so I made the decision to fight against Cyrus and try to not kill the president. What I'm wondering is how much of a difference to the story did that actually make? I could... I'm always stuck wondering about that. Should I go back and try a different route? Or would that hurt the game for me. You know, would that hurt the experience of the game for me if I go back and try different routes? I'm always conflicted when I think about that. Because I think going back and trying other routes might take away the personalness of... Like, I don't know, like the personalness of the route that you took. Because the first route that you took, you know, that's yours. That's your first experience with the game. If you do something else, does it take away from that? I never know. I always want to do it because I'm curious, but I don't want to do it because I'm worried it's going to harm my experience of the game. I don't know. I, I might. I might try a different route, actually. Alright, so yeah, I guess I will make another video about this um, if I try a different route. If not, I won't. But either way, yes, that was Dysfunctional Systems Episode 1, Learning to Manage Chaos, and... I don't know exactly when this came out, but it did come out fairly recently. And there's no set time frame for when the next episode will come out. I believe the people that made this, Dischan, are kind of like a... I get the impression that they're like a loose group of people who work on games in their spare time. So they're not like, you know, they're not like a... They're not like a, a studio that just makes games, that's their full-time job, and they have these deadlines, right? I mean, they just work on it, I think they just work on it in their free time, and whenever they manage to finish it is when it's finished. So I think, from what I read around, it sounds like they're aiming at maybe one episode a year. So, yeah, this is the only episode that's out, and there's no set time frame for when the next episode will come out, but if it does come out, or when it does come out, it's probably going to be quite a bit away. Probably many, many, many months. So what I'm saying is, don't expect it anytime soon. But when the next episode comes out, you can bet I will be playing it. And also, oh, I think they stated that it's planned to be... Uh, it's planned to be no more than five episodes, and I think they said it, that could be maybe minus one or two episodes. So I guess it could be between three to five episodes long. So there's quite a bit more to the story. And I'm looking forward to discovering what else there is to the story when it comes out. So again, support the game on Steam Greenlight if you want. I certainly already have. I think it's great. A uh, major thumbs up for Dischan, a group of people who I never knew about until, like, le this last week. And now I have major respect for their abilities because they're damn good. Thank you to Spectre Von Baron for recommending Junipers not to me because otherwise I would not have already found this out. And I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Wait, 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 hold on. Not goodbye. Not goodbye. Don't go. I forgot. I need to check extras. Whoops. Okay, I guess this is kind of going to be like, uh, uh, like Juniper's Not. Yep. Illustrations, concept art, jukebox, opening. All right, let's take a look at some of the illustrations. <laughs> Punch A. That was a very surreal and funny moment. Zoom in is plus and minus. Uh, those keys might be assigned to something in FRAP, so I actually don't want to press them. All 
Oh, you can go through different variations of it or something. Huh. Neat. God, the art in this game is so good. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Is that Waverly? That is Waverly, isn't it? That just flashed on the screen for like a split second one time when uh, Cyrus was asking her if she ever drank or something like that. <laughs> I still can't get over how good the art is. Oh, you know what? Some of these are locked. I wonder if you unlock them by doing an alternative route. Just look at how good the art is. My god. Aww. Winter in Waverly in a sidecar and motorcycle. Chrome is fun to paint. <laughs> What. The. Fuck. <laughs> Designed for the Mecha Girls. I, d I what? What is this? I don't even know what the hell's going on. Who? I want a pile of little girls when I com come home from work every day. And a trap, I guess. <laughs> what the f- I've just stumbled into a strange, strange world, everyone. Where am I? S someone lead me out of here. Or maybe I don't want to leave. I don't know. A pile of little girls. I don't know if that's cute or creepy. I, I can't tell. God, the- f Look at how good the art is! I wanted to draw some mecha girls. What better reason could you have than that? If you have Mecha Girls on the brain, then get Mecha Girls on the paper, or digital paper, file, yeah. You get the point. Winter, I don't think jumping in there is a good... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like a, a panty shot there. That, I, Yeah, I really have stumbled into some sort of bizarro world. Wait, is that like a giant tentacle monster that they're jumping into? Like, what the fuck? I, I'm intrigued, but I'm scared. In case it's not obvious, by the way, when it comes to anime and anime art styles and things like that, you know, manga. Is it even pronounced manga or is it manga? I think it's manga. And anime, I don't I don't have much experience with it. I I used to watch quite a bit of anime when I was really young. Uh, but I haven't watched anime in a really long time. So I So I don't really have all that much experience with it. I used to, but I've kind of forgotten everything. So, I mean, some of this... I know anime stuff can be really bizarre to an outsider, and I'm kind of like half of an outsider. You know, I'm not someone who has no experience with these things, but I'm someone who has limited and old experience with these things. So, yeah, I have like one foot in the anime door and one foot outside of it. I know enough to find it amusing and to be able to appreciate it. Like, I find it amusing when it's ridiculous like this and just to be able to appreciate it in general. But at the same time, I feel distanced enough from it that it's also bizarre. God, the art's so good. Imminent Tentacles Concepts. What? I... okay. Winter and Waverly. They look even younger than they did before. They look like they're 12 or something. Cyrus and Winter getting some snacks on a cold, rainy night in another world. Winter probably should have brought some pants. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. Yes. Dear God, look at the quality of this art. Just, uh... It's so good. It's so unbelievably good. Bonus panties. Well, what? Why is it called bonus panties? Made by panties. <laughs> okay. I accept is it what the fu um <laughs> What is it? I what? I 
flower pot. Flower. What? I. I'm gonna leave now. I. That looks like another one. Winter's panties. Someone has an obsession with panties. I, I'm not even gonna click on that one. It might. Oh, what the hell? Okay, let's do it. Hey, it's not naked. So. W called Winter's butt. <laughs> okay, let's read the description. Um, an illustration of winter. I think the environment designed by dysfunctional systems is pretty awesome, so I wanted to try and do some cool scenery too. Since I couldn't think of anything amazing, I just thought of drawing winter showing her butt. Also, thanks Dischan for letting me contribute a guest illustration. Uh, <laughs> what? I... Someone tell me where I am. What world have I entered? I... Okay. Um, did I miss any? I looked at that, I looked at that. Oh no, I didn't look at that. Wow. ICBM. Yep, 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 already looked at that. Um, <laughs> any other, what is this? Oh yeah, that's the explosion in the, in the warhead. Inspiration was drawn from children's science books. Hmm. Illustration for codex entries. Inspiration was drawn from children's science books. I thought that was really cool, that it actually showed where the country was. And actually, like, highlighted it. That was really cool. That was a nice touch. Fuck the, God, the art in this game. Look at that. In fact, I think that might be the thumbnail for it. That's probably going to be the thumbnail for this, because that is amazing looking. Just wow. Cover for the soundtrack. Okay, any others? Uh, this one? Oh yeah, that's the, the full piece of art from the main menu. <clears throat> Promotional illustration for episode 1. It depicts the ICD as a doorway to another universe. And suggests other themes relevant to the episode. This illustration represents the episode and the series, so a bit of planning went into it. That is a beautiful... Whoops. That is... Wait, where was it? That is a beautiful piece of art. Toggle overlay. Yeah, look at that. In fact, how big is this? Zoom 100%, press 1. Okay. Can I drag? Right mouse plus drag? Look at that. That is a beautiful piece of art. Alright, did I miss any others? That one, that one, that one. That one, yep, yep, yep. Okay, that's it for... Th Wait, did I look at this one? No, I didn't look at that one. I'm really happy to contribute an illustration for this project. It's very impressive how many games Dischan, Dischan is capable of producing. Best of luck to future endeavors. Okay, that's it for illustrations. Let's go to concept art. Initial concept art. Well, that initial concept art actually looks basically exactly like her. I guess the initial concept art was uh, straight on. Concept art for Winter Harrison, Dysfunctional Systems, Protagonist, yep. Oh, it looks like they were playing with the idea of not having her have, like, the like the big hoodie going all the way down, but some sort of pants that you could see. It is kind of a strange look, isn't it? I wonder, does she even have pants on? Or does she just wear a huge hoodie that is like a one-piece hoodie dress? I, I don't know. An animation guide for winter for the opening. A page like this helps the character look uh, helps the character look on model when animated. Cool, cool, cool. Concept art for Waverly, Winter's roommate at the uh, Mediatorum. Uh, Cyrus, concept art for Cyrus, Winter's mentor in episode one. Oh my god, look at his eyes in there! I mean, his eyes looked kind of boring and vaguely evil in the game, but there he just looks like a freaking ghoul that's gonna steal your soul. Concept art for the unnamed paramedic in episode one. Oh yeah, she doesn't even have a name. <laughs> you know what? Hold on. Uh, 
For some reason, her in that suit? For some reason, that suit reminds me of the uh, suit the protagonist wore in Waking Mars. I don't know if it's actually familiar at all, it just reminds me of it for some reason. It's probably the helmet that does, yeah. I think it's the helmet. Concept art for Winter's mother, who appears briefly in episode one. Uh, wait. She does? Also, why does Winter's mother look almost exactly like... She looks like 20. She looks 20 to 25 years old, and she's extremely busty, and she looks like she's... Like, wearing a sexy apron with sexy stockings and making sexy food. Like, what? I... I am so confused, everyone. Someone help me. What? Uh, why? I... What? Like, when I see stuff like this, I, I almost want to... criticize it for being, like, just tonally inappropriate for the story and taking away from the story. But on the other hand, since I have experience in anime, I kind of want to just laugh at it. I, I don't... I'm kind of, like, stuck between the two. Why is Winter's mother a, a sexy... baking... mother? I... what? Like, why? What the... Immaculate Art for the Dysfunctional Systems Episode 1 Beta. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I'm so glad I didn't forget to look at the extras. That is the best piece of art ever. Okay, th you know, this is going to be the thumbnail. No, I'm just kidding. That won't be. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, all of that, all of that. Jukeboxes, all of the music. And opening would just be the opening video, I suppose. Okay, so that actually is the end. Thank you, everyone, for coming with me. And staying past the end. I guess just, hey, just like the, gen just like the game seemed to end, but then it came back. I seem to end, but then I came back with the extras. I guess I'm replicating the game. Life imitates art, or whatever. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that bizarre look at some really good art and some really good and bizarre art that seemed to be obsessed with Winter's panties. And tentacles. Uh, yeah, I... I don't, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand. Can, can someone explain it to me? Does anyone understand? I don't. I don't understand. Someone save me. Someone get me out of here. I... I I'm trapped. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Goodbye.